Now, you've been looking at patients who've had breast-conserving therapy for uh, carcinoma, ductal carcinoma in situ. Uh, can you tell me what you were trying to do with this new gene test? So, ductal carcinoma in situ is a non-invasive cancer, and it's associated with a very high rate of survival. But treatment is recommended because some women will go on to recur. Uh, most women will have breast conserving surgery followed by radiation treatment. But guidelines recommend that breast conserving surgery alone, without radiation, is an option for women at low risk of recurrence. The challenge is that traditional clinical factors and the pathological features of DCIS do not reliably help clinicians identify those individuals at low risk of recurrence. So we know many women, and currently many women with DCIS, receive unnecessary treatment or overtreatment, and many do not have sufficient treatment or are undertreated. This is a biomarker assay. It's 12 genes of the 21 genes that comprise the Oncotype DX recurrence score, which is prognostic in women with early invasive cancer. These 12 genes have been shown to be associated with the risk of recurrence in women with DCIS treated with breast conserving surgery alone. Right, now you've done a study with substantial numbers of patients. Can you tell me exactly what you did? What was the protocol? Yes. So the initial study in the ECOG E5194 analysis showed that this multi-gene assay is associated with recurrence. But the individuals in that study were highly selected for this prospective cohort study. And it remained unknown if the DCIS score would be prognostic in a more general population of women with DCIS. So we established a population-based cohort of women with pure DCIS diagnosed in Ontario from 1994 to 2003. We went through a very rigorous process to identify women treated with breast conserving surgery alone. We did a pathology review of their slides and identified those with clear margins. That's the study cohort, 571 women. And we then evaluated the DCIS score as an independent predictor of local recurrence in this population. And what numbers come out of this? So we found that in this population, women who had a low risk score uh, had a significantly lower risk of recurrence at 10 years compared to those in the intermediate and high risk groups. This was highly sig statistically significant. Individuals. Uh, the DCIS score was associated with a hazard ratio of about two um, for every 50-point increase. But the DCIS risk group, as was previously defined, the low, intermediate, and high, the individuals in the low risk group had about a 12% risk of recurrence at 10 years compared to 25 to 30% for those in the intermediate and high risk group. Now, how does that rather precise molecular signature of risk compare with the classical ways of assessing risk? Well, what's very exciting about this is this is the first multi-gene assay in DCIS to provide individualized estimates of risk. So in the future, a woman can, and the, her physicians, can better understand her risk of recurrence after treatment by breast conserving surgery alone. This applies to the average woman with DCIS, not one with uh, many high risk features, but the majority of women fall into the category of average risk where we're really uncertain as to whether or not radiation is indicated. This assay provides a more accurate assessment of recurrence risk, and that can better inform clinicians and patients of the risk of recurrence, and they then can have a more informed discussion about the potential benefits of treatment, such as radiation and even tamoxifen. And to get some idea of the efficiency, the, the usefulness of this new addition to the armory of ways of assessing risk, how much radiation do you think you could, or how many cases of radiation could you avoid? I think it's difficult to tell. It, it's beyond the scope of this study. It really depends on the population and the utilization of radiation. But it can. we start by having a more accurate and individualized estimate of recurrence risk, and then that can better inform the physician-patient discussion on the potential benefits or even the need for additional treatment. So how would you like to see doctors applying this sort of information and this new test? I think DCIS should be treated and is optimally treated in a multidisciplinary setting. 
with surgeons, radiation oncologists, and medical oncologists. Individuals that are at average risk for whom we consider omitting radiation treatment, this test can provide a risk estimate, an individualized risk estimate. Then that can be taken to the patient and a more informed discussion about the potential benefits of radiation treatment or even the need for radiation treatment would then depend on the individual's preferences as well as her risk and other comorbid conditions she might have. It really does help provide a better estimate of risk and a better understanding of the potential need and benefits of treatment. And how easy is it for the multidisciplinary team to come to the sort of consensus about what needs to be done? Again, I think that's beyond the scope of this study and that for future consensus conferences and treatment guidelines will help guide us in the integration of the DCIS score into clinical practice. So could you summarize for me what you've achieved with this study? I think uh, the biggest achievement of this study is to confirm that the DCIS score is predictive of recurrence in a general population cohort of women with DCIS who were treated with breast-conserving surgery alone. And what doctors should take home from all of this? I think doctors should take home that this assay can help provide individualized estimates and help them and their patients better understand risks and potential benefits of future treatment. And hopefully this can help towards the goal of reducing overtreatment and reducing undertreatment for women with DCIS in the future.